In this lesson, we're going to talk about procedural modeling. All right, so in the last lesson, we had used a path and a shape to create this lofted object to create our straps here. Now, for the straps, we want to change the shape of those as they are very hard on the corners and really we lose the, um, the overall realism of CG here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to uh, take care of those. So to do this, uh, we would have to convert it to an editable poly. And we could do that by right clicking convert to editable poly. Now if we did that, we would lose all functionality with our loft object. And what I mean by that is if I go to loft and then um, I go into rectangle, or I'm, excuse me, path, and then line, and then I change my vertex mode, okay, and I come in and I start adjusting the vertices. Okay, so I lose this flexibility, but I still want that because I'm going to be using these as a base for uh, the rest of the straps on this object. So um, I don't want to lose that. So let's turn off vertex mode. Let's talk about a different way of modeling. And this is called procedural modeling. And this is where we actually add multiple modifiers on top of one another to create a history of the object itself. So starting out with this object, it is a loft object. We have a, the ability to change the line, change its shape, um, or the path in which that shape is lofted onto. And I want to be able to access the individual edges and modify this shape. So I can use a modifier uh, called Edit Poly. Now this is the uh, same type of functionality that we would have by right clicking and converting it to an editable poly. But now it's in a modifier form. So here I'm just building a history in which this model is built. So loft first and now it's editable poly. I can come in and go to edge mode. I can double click on these corners holding down control to create these loops. And then I can use my chamfer tool to smooth that out. So I'm going to go to 2 and hit OK. So once that has been uh, chamfered out there, we have our setting set. Let's go ahead and continue to reshape this. So let's go to um, edge mode, and I'm going to select this edge right here, and uh, let's hit ring. Now by hitting ring, it's going to select all the parallel edges, but it didn't go underneath, and I want it to select those as well. Now I could go ahead and hold down control and select ring, and it will select the rest of those. And then now what I want to do is I want to come in and change the overall shape um, by adding in some more segments. So let's come in and let's go to connect and let's add in three segments and hit OK. Now at this point I'm going to go to vertex mode by hitting one on the keyboard. I'm going to right click and cut from this vertex on the corner across to the opposite side. Let's do the same thing underneath and there we go. Now I don't need to do this at the top as it's going to be hidden, uh, so we're just going to leave that one the way it is. So let's go to polygon mode. Let's select all six of these polygons right here in the middle. And with our move tool active, let's pull this out. Now I'm pulling this out in the local axis, so that way it pulls it straight out along that normal. And then we're going to select just these two, and then pull those out a little bit further to create this ridge across the top. And then from here, let's go ahead and select these three edges. And let's pull those out along the Z just to round this out a little bit more. So now we've created a custom shape for this strap. So now what we want to do is we want to do the same thing here. Now I want to show you something really quickly. We have the ability to take modifiers and we can use those on other objects, especially if those objects have been duplicated from one another. Now, um, really quickly, let's right click on this editable poly and I'm going to copy that modifier. I can take it and put it on this object and paste it. Now, we might have a little bit of an issue if we paste this and I'm going to explain why this issue would come up. So let's right click and paste and you'll see that it goes ahead and it applies that chamfer and it makes all the cuts that we had there. Um, but it, as we get a little bit further down here, you'll see that some of that geometry is torn to pieces and it doesn't really look all that great. Why did it do that? They were duplicated from one another, so uh, I don't really see the difference. Well, what has happened is we've modified the lofted object lower in the modifier stack. So, really quickly, let's go ahead and delete this edible poly off this object. Let's go back to our top strap. 
Let's talk about moving down in the stack and what this means as far as our history goes. So if we make changes to our editable poly, okay, we've added some segments, we've modified the shape, and then we want to go back and we want to modify the shape at the loft level, uh, what happens? How do we control this? Well, if I select loft, it's going to bring up a warning here, and it's going to say that we've modified or we have a modifier that depends on topology and if we change anything below that particular modifier that's in question in this case it's the dependent modifier which is editable poly um, if we change anything below that it could change the edit poly modifier so it could change any of the final results that we have so if we want to go ahead and move forward with this we could by hitting hold yes now this does not guarantee that it's going to keep your changes so if I were to come in and I go to loft and then path and then I go to vertex mode and I'm gonna hit hold yes again and I grab my move tool and I pull this down to just change the shape and I even come in and I grab the handle point that in a different direction and then I come back to editable poly you'll see that it has destroyed that geometry and that's because we made too many changes below and it's going to mess up the topology of that dependent modifier so let's hit control Z couple of times and let's get back to our original state. Alright, so now that we've talked about the dependencies that we could run into, let's go ahead and make the change to this object here. So let's go ahead and use our edit poly modifier. With that applied, let's go to edge mode. Let's double click on all four corners, holding down control to make sure that we select um, multiple loops. Let's use chamfer, set our settings to two, and hit OK. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex mode and I'm going to cut from here to here. So right click and cut from this vertex to this one and then I'm going to cut from this one up to here. Let's hit F3 so we can see that and let's cut there. Let's right click to end our cut and then we'll go back up to the top here. Now this is going to be a little bit harder to get into so let's isolate this object and then we're going to left click here to here and then we'll right click to end that cut and then we'll start another one left click left click and then right click there we go so now we have those segments now I can go ahead and select one of these segments right here in the middle and hit ring and that should go all the way around because we have quads all the way through and then we're going to use connect let's do three segments and hit OK now this one uh, we could go ahead and round that out so let's hit F or I'm sorry 4 on the keyboard let's select these six right here along the front let's hit W to grab our move tool and pull that straight up take these two pull those up and then hit 2 on the keyboard to go to edge mode and let's pull those up okay round that out let's do the same thing here on the bottom 4 on the keyboard let's select the six in the middle pull that out take the two pull that out and then finally the center edge or center set of edges and round that out and there we go so now we've created those straps let's turn off isolate mode and there we go so now we have this set now before we move on let's do a little bit of cleanup let's select this rectangle that's in here and let's delete that out and then let's hit F3 and let's select that line and delete it as well because it's no longer needed. So now what we can do is we can take these straps and we can select all of those and we can copy those. Now before we copy these let's smooth these out by their smoothing group. So under edit poly let's go to element mode select the element and scroll down to our smoothing groups and hit clear all and set them all to one. Let's select the next object in line so it's going to be our buckle let's go to element mode select the element and I'm gonna go up here to my modeling tab I'm gonna to go to properties and then smoothing groups here so you can see that we have the same tools um, along the ribbon as also in our control panel so whichever you prefer is going to be um, up to you so I'm gonna select this properties smoothing groups clear all set that to one and then come in and we'll select the next object smoothing groups properties clear all set to one 
And let's make sure that we have that set there. Not sure if that got set exactly right. Select all of those properties, smoothing groups, set it to one. There we go. Looks like I accidentally turned that off. All right, let's hit F4. See, all of that is smoothed out. That looks great. And now let's select all four of these pieces. And let's make a copy. So hold down Control, or I'm sorry, Shift, drag that out in the X. And then let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's make sure that our reference coordinate system is set to view. So that way, whenever we rotate it, they rotate together. And then we'll move this over and get it into position. But you'll notice it's quite large. So let's take our scale tool, scale that in all three directions. Grab our move tool, and we'll pull that down. We'll try to get that to fit into position here. So that's going to fit right up against this edge here. So now, we've got a little bit of an issue. If I go to my front view, it's kind of hanging off the bottom here. So let's make sure that we go to vertex mode, take these vertices, and switch this from local to view. Pull that straight up. And I'm going to take these and pull these out. Now you might be asking, why aren't we using the loft here? Okay, well, um, I've already created this, um, this shape, and it's fairly close anyway. So there's no sense of removing that editable poly, changing the shape of the loft, and then adding another um, editable poly, and then reshaping all of that again. So we're just going to leave it just the way it is. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our final copy. We're going to hold, hold down Shift and drag this over. And then we're going to rotate that 180 degrees. And then position that where it should be. Okay, so that looks great. And it looks like we need to pull this out just a little bit more. It looks like my strap is kind of sticking through there. There we go, that's great. All right, so we finished up uh, that strap, and now we have the final straps that we need to create right here along the back. And these are, we're going to use the same uh, geometry, but we're just going to have to do it a little bit differently. So I'll see you in the next lesson.